Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game, The Oracle of Delphi. Delphi? Delphi? I don't know. I'm gonna say Delphi. The Oracle of Delphi. This was sent to me by Tasty Minstrel Games, and it is designed by Stefan Feld. For once, Zeus, Greek god of thunder and sky, is in high spirits. He wishes to offer a generous gift to a worthy mortal, and invite him to his realm, Olympus. To determine a sufficient candidate, Zeus will host a competition. He has issued twelve legendary tasks to raise graceful statues, to erect awe-inspiring shrines, to make generous offerings, and to slay the most fearsome monsters. The first participant to master all the assignments will win the favor of the father of the gods himself. Ooh. Indubitably, you will not pass up this golden opportunity, and so you clear your ship and rally your crew to follow the trails of legendary Odysseus through the dangerous waters of the Aegean. I don't know my Greek shit. But how will you find the righteous path onward? There is but one who can help you. Visit the mysterious Oracle of Delphi and let her answers guide your way. All right, let me show you how to play. So to win the game, you have to complete all 12 tasks given by Zeus as quickly as possible. You have to build three shrines, collect three offerings, and deliver them to their corresponding temples, uh, raise three statues, and defeat three monsters. Uh, as you can see, there's a very big board here filled with all sorts of confusing sort of items and monsters and tiles. Uh, I, I, I will say that setup when you're playing for the first time is kind of a bitch, but uh, <laughs> I've set it up for you uh, so you can see what the board looks like without having to set it up yourself. Anyway, across this map, there's all sorts of things you can do to try to complete your tasks. Now, in order to perform these tasks, you have three oracle dice, and as you can see, they all have different colored symbols, um, and you use these for actions on every turn. Zeus is right here in the middle. Hello. The first player to complete all their tasks and return to Zeus so just is to the winner. Explain what some of these are. These are called offering cubes. These little cubes. These are temples. These are statues. These are monster tiles. And these are island tiles. And then here's a quick look at the player board. This is not set up perfectly. Uh, you're supposed to like draw an injury card and like move one of these up. But I just wanted to show you kind of like the basics. Um, so this is your shield here. Uh, this is your oracle with play, uh, spots for the dice. Um, here's your god track, and this is your ship, and I'll explain what all this means uh, as we go on, but here's just a basic look at what this looks like. So the game is played in rounds, with each player taking one turn in clockwise order. A turn consists of up to three phases that must be performed in the following order. First, you must check your injury cards. Injury cards look like this, and they have uh, different colors on them. Um, let's say for this first uh, phase you don't have any. If you didn't have any injuries, you would take a favor token, I'll explain what these are later. Or you can advance one of your gods by one step, and I'll explain also explain what that is later. But normally you'll have maybe like one or two injury cards, in which case nothing happens, that's the most common case. Uh, if you had three equally colored injury cards, or six injury cards in total, uh, you would not be able to use your turn, you'd have to recover your turn and then you could discard three cards of your choice and end your turn. But normally you're not gonna have to worry about any of that. Instead, let's go to phase two and roll our three oracle dice. So we rolled blue, black, and pink. Now these are Zeus tiles, and you have 12 of them, and they represent the different tasks you need to do to win the game. And I'll go over each one. So this one is a monster tile. It means you have to beat a blue monster. If you do, you get an equipment card. Uh, this means uh, you have to load one offering of a blue cube on your ship and deliver it to a blue temple. If you do that, you get three favor tokens. This task means you have to raise three statues in different colors. Load statues from city tiles on your ship and deliver them to statue islands with building sites of the respective color. If you do that, you can take, com take a companion card. And this Zeus tile means you have to build a shrine on the depicted island tile with that symbol. The island tiles uh, are hidden normally, so you have to uh, find the correct symbol and put a statue there. Or not a statue, a shrine, sorry. If you do that, you can advance a god on the god track. So, with the dice that you've rolled, and you can actually manipulate the dice, but I will explain the actions first. Uh, you can move your ship up to three spaces, and you must end your movement on a space matching the dice. So, let's say I start here, and uh, if I wanted to um, end here, I'd have to have a green die. If I wanted to end here, I'd have to have a pink die. Wherever you end, up to three spaces uh, has to be 
uh, matching the color of a dice that you rolled. You can use a specific colored dice to fight a monster. If it's a pink monster, you need a pink dice. So every monster has a strength of nine. You decrease that value by your shield's strength. Uh, so if your shield strength is two, then the monster's strength is seven. You roll the dice. Hey, you roll the seven. If you roll seven, if you roll equal or higher to the current strength, you defeat the monster. You take the reward of your corresponding Zeus tile and discard that tile. You completed that task. However, if you roll less than the monster's strength, you lose the round. Uh, if you roll a zero, you draw an injury card. Uh, if you want to continue the fight, you have to pay a favor token. You can reduce the monster's strength by one and roll again and try. If you ever want to stop, you can surrender, but then in the next fight, the monster's full strength is restored. So it's very simple, just kind of rolling the dice, trying to get a higher number, uh, push your luck kind of mechanic. You can use a colored dice to explore an island. Now your ships have to be adjacent to the space. So to go here, I would have to use, let's say a green die or a pink die or a red die. Let's say I had a red die. I could use a red die to move here and use a yellow die to explore this island. And now we see the symbol. And if that symbol matches one of your uh, Zeus tiles, you can put a shrine on that tile and you get to get the reward uh, for completing that task. However, if the image does not match one of your Zeus tiles, you get a reward. For this one, you'd be able to discard all your injury cards of a color of your choice and increase your shield strength by one. Every symbol has different choices. So even if someone explores this tile but doesn't build a shrine, if it matches one of your tiles, you can go over there and build a shrine there to complete your task. Another action you can do is taking an offering. Uh, if you move over here, uh, if you need a green block, uh, you can use a green die to pick it up and put it in your ship. However, if your ship is full, this one has two slots, uh, you cannot carry any more offerings. And going along with that action, if you have the green offering and you make your way over to the green uh, temple, you would use the green die to place an offering onto that temple island and you would get a reward uh, of your corresponding Zeus tile. There's also loading a statue. Uh, if you wanted a blue statue, you would move over here. Uh, you would use a blue die to load a statue onto your ship. And if I had a blue statue, I'd have to find an island with a corresponding blue statue marker. So let's say I eventually made my way over here, I could use a blue die to raise a statue here. You can also use any color die to discard all injury cards matching the color of that dice, or you can advance a god on the god track. So if there's nothing you wanted to do on the map, let's say you had a yellow die, you could uh, move this up one towards the top for a god power potentially. Otherwise, there are color independent actions you can do, basically meaning you can use any dice to do them. You can draw an oracle card. This one will let you do a blue action on your turn. Uh, you can take two favor tokens. Favor tokens are very useful. Uh, and you, or you can look at two island tiles on the map. That's useful because then you know which icon is on the tile without even having to go to it. Because again, one of your tasks is to um, build shrines on specific tiles. So that can be very useful for uh, secretly knowing the icons on certain islands. So that's a lot of action. So it's a little overwhelming, but basically you just need to remember for actions, you can move your ship, fight, uh, explore and build shrines, load and make offerings, load and raise statues. Those are the main things you're doing to try to complete your tasks. So you might be thinking to yourself, man, only having to uh, depend on specific dice colors seems really limiting because it's just all up to chance. But there is a mechanic, uh, a very important mechanic that deals with that. You can use favor tokens to recolor the dice. And to figure out how to do that, uh, let's say I don't want this blue dice. I want this blue dice to be a green dice. I would have to use two favor tokens to move it and make it a green dice. Depending on how many colors it moves around the wheel from where you started, that's how many favor tokens you need to manipulate it. Or if you had an oracle card of a specific color, you could use that on your turn, but you can only use one of these per turn. But using one of these allows you to do that action uh, based on that color. Now let me explain the god track. So the god track, um, you can advance these god tokens up towards the top, and if you advance them towards the top, you can use a god power. Poseidon lets you place your ship on any water space, which is pretty dang good. Uh, Apollon lets you draw one oracle card, and this turn you may use your oracle dice and oracle card as if they were any color. Um, Artemis lets you uncover a face down island tile and take the corresponding reward. Basically, it's just like, hey, take the reward. Um, this uh, Aphrodite lets you heal or discard all your injury cards. Ares, if your ship is adjacent to a monster, you can defeat the monster without rolling the battle die. Just immediately take the reward. Um, and Hermes, if your ship is adjacent to a city tile, take a statue from any city tile and store it in your ship. So like I mentioned before, you can use your colored dice to move gods up 
uh, closer to the top because again those god powers are extremely powerful. You can also get companion cards uh, when you uh, raise statues. I'm not going to go into all of them but there's uh, heroes, demigods, creatures. They let you like increase your shield strength or uh, draw oracle cards, it lets you have all sorts of bonuses. For defeating monsters, you can get equipment cards and these let you do stuff like it, uh, increase your ship's range or some of them are one-time bonuses where you can, like for example, advance one of your gods to the top row really quickly. Um, so there's some cool stuff there as well. So now that I've gone through all the actions and all the objectives, let me just go through a, a turn with you. So look, you look at your injuries, let's say you're, you're okay on injuries. At the beginning of the game, you've rolled your dice. So you'll have your dice already. Uh, in this case, red, yellow, and green. And let's say I wanted uh, red to be black instead. I could use like one favor token and uh, make this a black instead. Uh, and then I would do my actions with the corresponding dice, complete my turn. Now, when you end your turn, you roll your dice and you call out the colors that you rolled. And what the other players can do, in this case, it's red, pink, and black. They would look at their god track. And if any of their gods are above the lowest row, meaning they've progressed at least one step, let's say another player had like red and black um, above the lowest step. They could move their red and black gods up a step when you call red and black. Now you don't do this on your turn. You can only do this when someone else is announcing their colors. Now what's interesting is that since you've rolled your dice, you know what colored dice you're gonna use on your next turn, because you keep the dice here until your next turn. So you can have some time to plan while other players are going. And it's also fun because even if it's not your turn, you're still making, you're still paying attention to what other people are rolling because you could potentially move your gods up and get some nice powers. And then the last player of the round rolls the Titan die. Here's a four, and the Titan attacks all players simultaneously. If the Titan's strength was six, you would all draw two injury cards. Otherwise, compare your shield strength to the Titan's strength. If it's lower, in this case it's definitely lower, you would draw an injury card. And that's how injuries build up. Besides monsters, the Titan also attacks everybody. As you complete tasks, you discard them. And if you complete all 12 of your tasks, you have to return to Zeus using normal movement rules. So as soon as you're done with your last task, you have to race back to Zeus. To get onto Zeus, you have to use um, an Oracle dice of any color. The first player to complete all 12 of their tasks and make it back to Zeus first is the winner. And that's how you play. All right, so learning how to set up the game at the, the first time you play it is a huge chore. The rule book is not that clear. I kind of think that it could be a lot clearer, both in presentation and in the order of how you learn how to play. So that was definitely a drag in the beginning. But once the game gets going, it's a really fun game. It really gives you the feel of almost like a like an open world map. Like there's all these different objectives you can do scattered around the map in random spots. And you have like all these objectives to do. And it's really up to you like what you start to do like do you want to go kill some monsters you want to go get some offerings it's it's totally up to the player using the dice as efficiently as you can based on the colors is fun and i like being able to manipulate them with the favor tokens that's really really a great idea i do like that you roll the dice at the end of your turn and so you know your uh dice for the next turn so there's not a lot of like uh just sitting there just kind of like uh not knowing what to do like you know uh Analysis paralysis, basically. Uh, you can basically figure out what you're going to do next time uh, as other players are going. The special god track is a lot of fun. Uh, it lets you have some sort of interactivity during other players' other players' turns. Um, you know, as they're calling out their colors, you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to go closer to Poseidon or whatever. And it encourages you to uh, nudge them up above that bottom row because you want to get those bonuses. There's a lot of replayability because the map, even though there's a lot of setup, it is entirely customizable. So uh, you can put the tiles wherever you want. Like, uh, it's going to be a different game pretty much every single time. Knocking off those Zeus tasks feels very satisfying, and the rewards you get from them make you feel powerful. As you power up your shield, as you get companions that give you um, permanent ber perks and stuff, it really feels good. And it, I mean, it, it does feel like like your, your character is improving. One minor complaint, and I always complain about this, I'm not a fan of the uh, symbols. I'd rather have text. I feel like it's just not, it's, there's a lot of like looking up, especially with, um, 
um, the equipment cards and the companion cards. You're like, okay, what does this do? I gotta go look at all of them and figure out which one this means. Uh, and I understand why. It's because it's easier to translate. To you know, you don't have to translate stuff for different languages and. You know, it's, it, I get, it. I understand why, but for me, it, it, I just, I always find it a hassle. And I always prefer when games just have text. Just have the text on the card, I can read it, ta-da, don't gotta search and rifle through a rule book. But fortunately, the symbols are only on those cards. You can basically play the game without having too much downtime looking things up. Because most of the actions you do are very intuitive. Moving around, fighting monsters, it's all color based, very easy to remember. Using those colors, manipulating those colors to better colors, and just using them to their top efficiency, and going around on your ship on this massive map, it really feels good. Uh, overall, it's a great game. A lot of variety of options. I love that open world feel. Uh, it's a very satisfying game. I highly recommend it.